Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're going to be discussing two features which currently exist with .NET that we can actually utilize that's going to make our life much more easier or at least much more convenient. And these features are not really well known or maybe you have not really stumbled upon. So let's jump into it and see what they are. So the first one which is going to be discovering is going to be called the global using class. So what is it? So if we take a look at our controllers, all of these different controllers are almost using the same different using mechanism or referring to the same files, either automapper or custom entities or different uh, ASP.NET libraries. So all of these are basically going to be uh, duplicated across different controllers. So how can we actually have a single file which is going to be responsible for having all of these usings rather than having to include them in every single file that we create. And this is where global usings come into place. And this has been released with C Sharp 10. So every project that you are using after C Sharp 10 should have these capabilities. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it the global usings. And you can, we can store this anywhere we want. If we want, you can store it in the root directory. And this file will basically, we're going to delete everything from it. And I'm going to start by taking some of these, here I'm going to take all of them, all of these usings uh, from my first controller and I'm going to add them here. And the thing that I want to add here is before the actual using keyword, I'm going to add a global and I'm just going to copy paste this. So now if I go back to my drivers, we can see it automatically these got grayed out because they are already being utilized somewhere else so that we can see that my code is much more cleaner. If I go to base controller, again, these have been grayed out because they haven't been utilized somewhere else. And if I go to achievements here, similarly. So basically what I have here, if I have now one single file, and this single file will contain all of the usings that I'm going to be needing uh, across all of these different uh, controllers. And basically from there, all I need to do is just refer to anything that I need within the global using rather than have to refer in the controllers. And this does not only work with controllers. So if I go to my interfaces, here, I don't have anything. Here, for example, we don't really need to use this one, so I can remove it. Another service, again, I can remove it from here. Even if I go to my program.cs and I have any usings here, we can see that I can actually directly remove it. I can even add these to the global usings, so I can take this off. Go to my global usings and add them there. And here I can have global. And that way, right now, if I go to my program.cs, we can see everything is still working, much more cleaner much more streamlined and now let's try it out and see if everything is still working as it should be so i'm just going to click on run so now if i go to my web browser click on a api drivers get all drivers try it out execute we basically got all of the results back if i click on execute again we can see that all of everything is working nothing has been uh, nothing broke basically and what i have here now is a more streamlined approach to all of my using inside my application so that's the first cool feature that uh, I wanted to cover. The second one is about logging. So let's say here, for any reason, I have a problem within get all drivers. So for any reason, I have any problems with this. There is an exciting feature within .NET that we can actually utilize in order for us to debug the information that we need within our problem to a very level of details that can allow us to be much more efficient. So let's create this method here. So I'm gonna call, uh, I'm gonna make it static void log message and this uh, similar to what we usually do i'm gonna put string the message that i want to log but now this is the exciting part we're gonna add brackets and we're gonna say caller member name and it's gonna be string member name we're gonna have another one caller file path we're gonna have another string caller file path and the last one caller line number and here again string line number equal and then I'm gonna just do console dot write line I'm gonna say message as you string interpolation message and I'm gonna put here my message oh this needs to be an int and this needs to be zero and then I'm just gonna duplicate these so member name member name caller file path, caller file path, and the last one is going to be line number. So now within this, if I want to utilize it and actually see all of this nice information in action, I'm just going to take my log message and I'm going to put it within get all drivers. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to say log message. For example, let's make it also string interpolation. There are, I'm going to add here drivers.count in my return. 
for example. So now let's see what happens. I'm gonna stop my application and I'm gonna run this. Now it's running, I can go back to my web browser and I'm gonna click on execute. If I go to my console, we can see the message, there are six in my return. We can see the member state, what is what uh, what was the action that called this log method and then we can see the actual user or the file location and we can see the line number exactly so all of these debug information can be really really helpful so in this case scenario what we have done here is we have only added it in the normal scenario but this will really be beneficial if we have let's say here i have a try catch so i'm just going to put a try and i'm going to put this here and if anything went wrong for example i can just put my log message i can say here something went wrong and then what i can do is i can attach the message that i want e.message for example and let's make this here let's fix this indentation and this is again an example you never do this in real life scenario but this is so we can show you where this will actually come into place and i'm just gonna do, go here through i'm just gonna throw a random exception so we can actually see it working so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna stop this i'm gonna run this again and let's go back to my web browser click on execute we're not gonna receive anything but if i go back to my logs if i go all the way up we can see exactly where the file has failed and we can see basically where we can find it and actually try to identify the problem. So this is a really powerful feature within C Sharp and it's, which is gonna allow us to actually have more control and actually allow us to debug the problems that we're gonna be facing much more faster. So these two new features that we have discussed today, I hope they were a bit beneficial. Maybe you can add them to your source code and to your uh, application and projects. If you have any questions, as always, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.